Welcome to another Darktable tutorial. In this video, we'll be doing the Color Zones module and learning how to use it. Color Zones, you can find it un down here under More Modules. This is in alphabetical order. So you just go down to Color Zones and then we'll just click it and make sure that appears. And that's how we got this effect here. So what we did, we took our original image or our base image and then we uh, just adjusted the colors so we've got some more pink and purple instead of what the original was with like this red paint you can download this image from uh we saturate i'll include the link in the description of this video if you want to follow along because it's a really good image for for using this tool uh, so the color zones when we select it we have some different options we have uh, it shows us a bunch of little colored boxes and when we hover our mouse over it does this sort of weird squiggly type thing um, we can adjust the size and the influence of it with our scroll wheel. And then we have lightness, saturation, and the chart kind of changes for saturation. And we have hue, and the chart will change for that as well. Well, the, what I did for to create that look, let's just go back and uh, go to compress history stack. So this is kind of back to the base now. Um, what I first did, I went to hue, and we selected by hue. Well, actually, let's start at the beginning lightness so we can select certain colors certain pixel color groups within this image and adjust the lightness of just those colors so to do this we can either look on the chart and approximate with our eye or we can click and get the color picker here and we can drag this around to a certain point so if we drag it to these yellows it draws a, an indicator do you see that there's like a black line now that wasn't there before in right in the middle of these yellows and so that shows us where that kind of falls, the zone the, that these colors are in. And then we can just left click on these and we can increase the lightness or the darkness of just those colors. Let's zoom out. I'm hitting the control wheel on my mouse, the scroll wheel. So if we adjust that, we see where it's changing just the darkness of that yellow, but it's keeping it the same uh, hue. If we double click, it'll reset to zero. We can also adjust the saturation, so our mark is still there, that black line is still there. We can give it less, if we go down, it's less saturation, all the way to pretty close, we can go to black and white, I think. Or we can give it more saturation, all the way up to really kind of unrealistic looking, unnatural looking. Double click brings that back into normal. And the hue is kind of the fun one. So the hue is what lets us take it where it's at right now, is sort of this yellowish greenish color. And if we move it up, we can move it into a more green or more blue. I'm getting my mouse out of the way because it has this yellow thing around it so you can't see very well with it. But uh, if we drag it down, it'll go into the blues or purpley. We get it really down into those blues. And if we bring it up, we can get it into also, well, blues. It sort of, it sort of loops over again. So once you get to the very top, it loops over back to the bottom. But we can get some greens in there. So we can keep those greens. You see it looks a little bit maybe not so realistic so we can take down the saturation now so we can bring down the saturation a little bit or bring down the lightness a little bit of those uh, so that looks more like kind of more like paint and then we can do the same thing we can create another instance of this this is something we haven't really learned yet i don't think if we click this icon here and go to new instance now we have a color zones one so we have color zones where'd it go we have color zones that we just did and then we have color zones one so under color zones one, we can do the same thing to this other side. We select sort of the colors that those are at, and then we can do the same thing, change the hue of just those colors. And so we can make those ones sort of more purple-like and change the saturation of those and the lightness of those as well if we want to, darker or lighter. Maybe we'll go darker on that. So we've really kind of made, we've changed the way this looks without affecting the whites. That's kind of the problem a lot of times when you're trying to change the color of something. You might go to grab this, uh, even like color balance is going to adjust the colors of the back of everything. So the whites get kind of thrown off a little bit. Color correction here is one that's a really good thing, but it it's good when you don't have a lot of whites or when you're okay adjusting your white balance because it changes the way your whites look. Well, um, the way we've done it, we were able to adjust these colors using the color zones without affecting any other colors. Let's look at one more example since this is a, a super fun and super powerful tool. Here's a car that looks pretty cool, but we see I've adjusted a little bit in the background there. This is what the original looked like. So it was a blue car. And then after the uh, using, well, I used color zones and zones on it to give it some more kind of contrast. 
Um, but so we can just go down to just that base curve again, compress history stack, and we'll grab not color correction because color correction, we know what that does is make it look, it adjusts everything. So we don't do color correction, we do color zones. And the color zone, we just find those blues. We can even just click in here and just eyeball it without having to get the color picker. And we can make them make it a lighter blue color. We can go to the hue and make it a different color altogether. We can make it more green. We can kind of bring that over and make it more of a purple. And without affecting the brick and the rest of the building. So really, really cool stuff that we can do here. And we didn't have to do any masking at all to achieve this look. Uh, so it's really cool. And we could do the same thing with the bricks. If we wanted to, we could grab the color picker, select the bricks. The bricks are over here. So we could change the color of the building, give it more, uh, you know, have it look a little bit different color as well. Or we could leave it the same color and change the uh, the darkness of it, make it really a darker building or make it look lighter. Oh, one more thing I wanted to mention about this. These zones do have these little triangles here at the bottom. So if we want to, let's bring that back to kind of how it was. This one with the car, if we find that zone that that's in, we can adjust these triangles and get a little bit more accurate, kind of makes this more sharp and more pronounced. So see what, what that's doing. As we click these triangles, it sort of makes that selection area a little bit different. But these triangles correspond with node with these uh, circles. The triangles correspond with these circle nodes. So if ever there's a, like if we want to select in between these two, there's a circle here and a circle here. If we want to select in between the two, bring one of these over to that point. And that's that. I think the scroll will do it. No, in the, there's another module called just, what's it called? Zones. Anyway, let's find that uh, zone system. So the zone system, you can have some control over this too, but just without colors. Anyway, just want to throw it out there. Appreciate you guys watching. Leave your questions or comments below if you have any, and I'll catch you in the next video.